Hello and welcome to this evening's lecture, the Southern uh, Joint Branch of Reno IMRST. Tonight's lecture will be on sandwich plate technology, no, sandwich panel systems technology. Um, and our speaker tonight is Ian Nash from SPS Technology, which I imagine you can guess what the acronym stands for. Um, so for those of you who weren't uh, here for the last lecture, um, these lectures are recorded and they're put on YouTube. So the way we do the Q&A is you have the option, if you don't mind being recorded for posterity, to uh, just raise your hand on the, um, you know, you have the option to just raise your hand. And I will then, um, at the end, when we do the Q&A session, I'll just promote you to panelists and you can speak and ask your question and then ask follow-up questions if that's what you want to do. If you would rather not be recorded, uh, you can post your question in the Q&A chat um, anonymously if you prefer, and I will read your question out for you, and so then you, you won't be recorded. So I think without further ado, I will introduce you to our speaker. As I said, it's, it's Ian Nash, um, who is the Marine and Offshore Business Manager at SPS Technology. And he works with a, a wide range of international clients advising on the permanent class approved composite structural steel repairs. Um, and and his, his, his aim is to, to ensure that these sorts of repairs are seen as standard repair options and they're not a new technology anymore. Uh, so uh, Ian studied uh, engineering at A-level and then joined the Royal Navy and, and ended up as a lead marine engineer on destroyers. Then went on to study marine engineering at Portsmouth University before beginning um, he's 13 years plus at SPS Technology. He's worked on a range of projects around the world with most of the oil majors and has taken part in a number of maritime research and development projects. So I think without further ado, I will hand you over to Ian. So if you could start sharing your screen, Ian. Enjoy the lecture. Good evening and uh, thank you for inviting me to give this presentation on repairs using SPS, which of course stands for uh, Sandwich Plate System. Please note that this presentation along with my speaker notes will be added to the slides, will be available at the end of the presentation should you wish to request them. During the presentation I'm going to give an introduction to SPS, provide a summary of the benefits and applications, approvals and round it off with some examples of some interesting projects where SPS has been used. We'll touch upon our well-established no hot work repairs and also an in-depth look at how SPS can help in areas where there are cracks. As you can see from this agenda slide, there's a tennis stadium there and, and a bridge. These are part of SPS civil engineering department and along with building the walkways to the space shuttle out of SPS panels for NASA, there are some other interesting projects on our website. So check those out when you've got some time. But for now, let's delve into the maritime and offshore world of SBS. We all know that structural maintenance on vessels and assets is growing both in terms of demand and complexity. This requires a new, innovative viewpoint and overhaul of decades old approaches to steel strengthening, renewal and reinstatement, utilizing composite materials for standard and unique applications, such as the no hot work solution where welding is not possible or crack repairs in heavily loaded areas. Using sandwich plate system will not cost time, environmental and safety benefits. We need to move away from the natural siloed way that companies think and start sharing these repair techniques throughout the industry. So SPS, what is it and why is it used? It's a strong structural composite material, two metal plates bonded by a polyurethane elastomer core. The core itself provides global for support to the face plates. So there's no weak spots or local buckling. There's a high stiffness to weight ratio, superior alternative to stiffened steel and reinforced concrete. I know that's a bold claim, but during this presentation, I hope to uh, convince you. As I mentioned, it's used in a wide variety of civil and maritime and industrial applications, whether that's new build or in situ repair or an upgrade. There's many additional benefits such as excellent energy absorption as the polyurethane is a solid elastomer. It's got noise and vibration deadening, protection against impact and blast and ballistics and fire along with competitive economics. Our study showed that for a typical marine reinstatement, SPS is four times faster and for offshore work, we'll say on a hull, excuse me, hull plating of an FPSO or semi-submersible below the waterline, it's 11 times cheaper. In 
our uh, presentation, you'll see some donations of, of numbers referring back to SPS sizes. So if it's an 820E, that means it's eight millimeter new top plate and 20 millimeter PU core on top of existing corroded steel. And this is a patented system. As you can see here in the slide, you can see a traditional stiffened steel panel uh, deck, the primary members and secondary stiffeners in between. Um, and the SPS equivalent, you can see the primary stiffeners are there, but the secondary stiffeners are not required because inside the two face plates with the polyurethane bonds both plates, it acts as a million, million little stiffeners in itself. So it can be used for renewal, restoring the strength of an equivalent of as built, repair, where the original structure has failed under operational conditions, or reinforcement to increase the strength to meet new requirements. That could be deck loading or impact protection, etc. So we repair and conversion of existing structures, as I mentioned, superior to conventional crop and replace, on-site application, extremely fast process, no structural removal because we leave the existing plate in place. It's non-disruptive, it's safe, and we think it's better than new structural performance, minimizes labor content and downtime, and there's a wide range of applications. As you can see, when I mentioned crop and replace being the traditional steelwork reinstatement, you can see from the, the photograph that can be disruptive, time-consuming, unpredictable and dangerous with piecemeal removals. There's a risk of overloading the adjacent structure, prevents parallel working, leaving spaces open to the elements. So you need to have habitats and, uh, and coverings to protect, especially in this part of the world, uh, against the weather. Schedule and even hardware machinery risk during the removal of attached services and fixtures and fire hazard from the cutting and welding of, uh, of the existing plate. So I've got a little video here that I'm going to talk you through. This is the repair method, how SPS is installed in an animation. And for instance, this is a row row ferry. So our SPS truck moves off the deck and I'm going to take just one section to show you the process. Usually all the blasting is carried out across the whole deck and the sequence is carried out that way. So we blast the existing deck back to SA two and a half. We blank off any holes in the deck or any old penetrations that are not required anymore. We then weld solid perimeter bars around the edges. In this instance, the, the ship owner wanted new lashing pots put in place, um, new pads. They can all be included in the design. And the top plate is laid on top of the perimeter bars and welded to the perimeter bars, creating an airtight cavity. And in each of the four corners, a ventilation hole is drilled um, to allow the polyurethane, once it's pumped in, to fill the cavity in and, and escape to the, through the ports at the side. Then we put a strong back beams across the top of the panel to stop it bending up so you get a completely flat panel. Our two part chemical mixture is injected at the lowest point of the panel. As you can see, it's injected as a liquid and after 10, 15 minutes, uh, it goes through an exothermic reaction, bonding the new plate to the existing deck, creating one homogeneous panel. Um, that after about an hour is fully solid and after 10 to 12 hours you can drive articulated machinery across the panel. Um, it's full working condition. Owner's coated specification, as I said, that is one specific part of the, the ship, but we generally do that throughout the whole deck. SPS simplifies design. So it's reduced stiffeners and intersection wells, as I, as I mentioned, um, when comparing two sheet steel panels with an SPS panel. Uh, in this example here, I show that there's a 10,000 deadweight product oil tanker. If it was made from old steel, the complexity of it versus if it was made from SPS. So there's a fewer fatigue and corrosion sensitive details with that. Uh, you know, there's a, a result of improved fatigue and corrosion resistance, reduce risk of structural failure, simplified application, and maintenance of coatings, reduce surface area with flat surfaces. So the key benefits, you know, reduce weight, improve space utilization, reduce through life maintenance costs. There's some noise and vibration dampening, fire blast and ballistics. Speaking of fire resistance, if you take a look at the top left-hand photo, that plate has been exposed to 945 degrees fire for 60 minutes. It's red hot, it's lost its structural strength. If only it had been a part of an SPS panel, right? 
The SPS panel on the top right hand side is exposed to the same conditions, but we can see from the results detailed between the two photos that the temperature experienced on the top of each of the plates is vastly different, as the polyurethane core has a very low thermal conductivity value, allowing the SPS panel to remain cool and retain its strength. SPS has been tested against cellulostic, hydrocarbon and jet fires. The thing to remember here is that an SPS panel can be constructed to meet your design criteria. So the thickness of the steel, um, if it's carbon steel or if it's uh, other types of metals that need to be considered, and the polyurethane core in between, that can be varying thicknesses depending on um, what the design criteria is and what we're trying to achieve. So it's very versatile. You see in this slide, SPS has got built-in blasts and ballistics protection, so it's superior to steel. It absorbs blast energy, prevents rupture and tearing, and blocks shrapnel, Prever preserves structural integrity, and limits secondary damage. And that's that's key for, for some of the, the cases that we've looked at. It's not the initial blast or fire, it's the subsequent ones that happen after it. Um, so we have completed um, testing for SBS panels um, primary and secondary skins where we have to withstand 2.3 bar blast pressure. Um, we exceeded uh, uh, that project specification, um, full structural integrity maintained, protection against further blast and subsequent fire. Um, and, and on the subject of testing, you know, there's been over 12,000 independent tests carried out for SPS applications. So it's a, it's a very well-established technology. As you can see from this slide, SPS is class approved by all major classification societies as a permanent repair and written into their rules and guidelines. SPS is not a temporary repair. It's a permanent repair that's been in service for more than 20 years. So SPS has got an amazing track record. So technically looking at composite repairs in the maritime industry, um, there's temporary, temporary composite wrap repairs where damaged structures can be repaired and protected against the effects of erosion, corrosion, and deterioration using polymer composites. And then we look at the composite patch repairs where carbon and glass fibers are mixed with epoxy resin, resin or adhesive and um, put on the damaged surface. By curing the resin hardens and permanently bonds to the surface, impregnating the fibers and reinstate the strength of the damaged part. This creates a new solid layer of material that provides water tightness. When we look at SPS in the middle at the top, it's the fully class approved permanent repair for strengthening and upgrading and has been used in the maritime structures for, for over 20 years. As I mentioned in my introduction, SPS no hot work. It's a quite specific application for our maritime customers. Uh, we see in this slide, the SPS no hot work solution. Uh, it's been in service for over 17 years now. and it's By no means a new technology. It's a very established technology. In this picture, we can see the main deck of a vessel. The original plating in this scenario has thinned down to 50% globally. So the SPS no hot work solution is ideal to reinstate this deck. As per the video at the top of the presentation, the same installation principles apply here. The perimeter bars are positioned above the under deck stiffeners. They're bolted or adhered to the original deck. And then a new plate on top is positioned on top, of the, on top of the perimeter bars, where it's again bolted or adhered to the bars to form an airtight cavity. The PU is pumped into the cavity as a liquid, then solidifies, bonding the new top plate to the existing deck. And to my knowledge, SPS No Hot Work Solution is the only solution to structurally reinstate the deck in a continuous manner because each cavity share a perimeter bar with another cavity, giving you top plate continuity and strength uh, all over the deck, which in, in, in essence increases the global strength. So in summary, SPS permanently reinstates the, uh, the existing steel back to original capacity or beyond. It's accepted by major classification society rules, uh, societies and published in class rules. It's a standard proven technology underpinned by 20 years of market experience, independent testing and hundreds of projects in service. Faster, safer, more predictable repair schedule. It's up to 11 times cheaper and three times faster than crop and renew. Um, contributes to global strength, as I mentioned there, because there's no maximum repair size. So it's not a case of having to um, put together uh, one square meter patches uh, side by side. Um, the SBS 
can cover large areas on board any vessel. Largest uh, no hot work repair actually that was approved um, was 841 square meters. Um, so yeah, large areas, we're not talking small areas here. It's a permanent repair solution with no risk of further corrosion to the existing plating because the existing plating is, is covered by the polyurethane core and the, the top plate itself. Um, we installed through an international network of SPS partners with a full QA procedure. It's durable in the harshest conditions, proven life extension. Um, no need for welding or grinding, so the hot work um, side of things is, is not required, or a cofferdam or a dive boat for below waterline repairs, which we'll come on to some examples. Now, looking at this photo, it's, it's clear to see that this vessel crack is beyond a wrap or patch or even SPS repair at this point, but the image is very impactful to say the least, that uh, cracks come in all shapes and sizes. Repairing the cracks present on a vessel or assets, critical structure components, forms a key part of structural maintenance, which preserves asset integrity, ensures crew safety and safe passage of cargo. The global oil and gas fleet is aging. New stress points are emerging on existing vessel structures as a result of retrofitting and, and refits. Work that's vital in prolonging the life of a vessel and ensuring cost-effective compliance with environmental regulations. These factors mean that the demand for structural maintenance, including crack repairs, is greater and more complex than ever before. For many years, gouging and rewelding or crop and renewal techniques have been used to address cracks on vessels. While effective, the process involves extensive steel renewal, which is costly, time consuming, and comes with heightened risk and time out of service. Over the next few slides, we'll examine how a combination of these factors suggest an overhaul is required in the industry's approach to crack repair. While repair techniques have remained static for many years, structural composites can offer a cost competitive alternative that's fast, non-disruptive, and delivers improved strength compared to conventional steel structures. But steel ship structures can develop cracks as a result of their all welded construction, material imperfections, loading conditions, fatigue and corrosion as they operate in a highly corrosive environment. Welded ship structures are susceptible to damage during its construction and operational life. It could be design inadequacies, material selection, imperfections, improper welding. Fatigue and corrosion are related to the operation side of uh, the vessel's life. These damages are primarily manifest as cracks in the ship's structure either immediately after fabrication and launching or in due course of time. Crack formation or initiation appears inedible or unavoidable given the uncontrolled variables involved in the construction of a welded ship. Along with other factors, especially the use of high tensile strength steel for the ship's hull structure. In this example project of a crack in the hull of a vessel, this vessel was lengthened and the cracks were formed in an area of where the new connection meets the old. Defect crack locations are in the aft portion of the hull, which is the original section. Backing brackets were not installed in the way of the side shell longitudinal stiffeners during the new build or conversion. Cracks originally appeared at the bulb or collar plate weld connection at the aft side of the bulkhead. Backing brackets were fitted during this repair. Cracks initiated a new bracket toe return weld and propagated through the longitudinal stiffener web and onto the side shell plating above and below. Existing temporary repairs completed shortly after the crack was identified using a temporary doubler plate. So, with the SPS solution, we marked out a cut line on the longitudinal stiffener, carefully cut away the stiffener web, we ground the remaining web edges square, remove the upper doubler plate, remove the lower doubler plate, remove the existing wooden plugs. We fitted new brass plugs and trim flush to the side shell plating. Then we ground the cracks to create a smooth open profile. The surface preparation, we blasted back to uh, 60 microns and we applied a moisture tolerant sealant and then we applied structural adhesive over the top. So as you can see in this slide here, we fitted in tack welded back and bars to the existing frame as can be seen in the red. So this makes, um, this, this, this shows that all the welding took place away from the side shell itself. Backing bars were tacked in place to the stiffeners, uh, ensuring that uh, no heat was transferred to the hull because it was below the waterline. There's no need for water back welding procedures here. Then the top plates were fitted to the backing strips in, in this formation. Once the steel and the wells have cooled to ambient temperature, 
all wells were visually inspected and 100% MPI'd, cavity leak and humidity test, and then we injected the SPS elastomer. Comments from DNV were the FE and fracture assessment was calculated assuming that the full diesel tank and uh, the fatigue assessment is performed with a dynamic external pressure for the loaded condition for all load cycles for 20 years. The calculated dynamic pressure corresponds to the largest stress range during the service life of 20 years. And they concluded by using SPS, the stress range decreased by 95% compared to how the sideshell would be without any extra stiffening. Class calculation showed that the SPS panel between the existing stiffeners contributed to a low stress level in the cracks and the fatigue analysis showed uh, low probability of any further crack growth. So the next example I have is um, an Aframax double hull tanker crack. So the problem was the crack uh, was in the way of the inner side skin knuckle where in one of the cargo tanks, um, in addition to the conventional repair, it was elected to further strengthen the joint by adding SPS on the knuckle for the entire length of the tank. The objective of the SPS repair was to reduce the stress levels at the joint and also provide an additional barrier between the oil tank and the adjacent ballast tank, adding an extra margin of safety against oil entering the ballast space. So the solution here was to assess the service life fatigue performance of the knuckle joint. A structure analysis was carried out through the use of the global 3D finite element model of a portion of the ship, extended over three cargo tank lengths and a fine mesh FE model of the hull from uh, frame 50 to 65. Some photos here, you can see uh, the installation, uh, the effectiveness of the SPS repair has been investigated through FE analysis using two models, represent the as-built structure and then with SPS. Use of SPS as a permanent repair is effective because it significantly reduces the stress levels in the knuckle joint. With a conservative assessment of 25% reduction in stresses at the critical locations, the fatigue life is improved by approximately 2.4 times. Ice Class 1A Super Vessel Repair Crack Bulkhead Plating. So this project was brought to us um, by actually one of the classification societies following their discussions with a client regarding a life expectancy study of what, what was a 22-year-old um, Ice Class Super Vessel. Repair of the cracks between the bulkhead plating between the wing water ballast tanks and the centerline fuel oil tanks was the problem. No single cause could be attributed to any cracks that have occurred on this ship. In general, cracking appears to be a result of a number of factors that have accumulated over time, compounded by the relatively long and continuous service in severe operating environments. The solution was to inhibit future crack propagation as well as eliminate the possibility of cross-contamination in the event of crack propagating through the full thickness of the bulkhead plating using SPS. So SPS in this case assisted in it becoming a triple barrier. So it's got the existing steel, then it's got the polyurethane, and then it's got the new uh, thinner top plate. So my last few words for cracks on vessels, because I know I've, I've spoken a fair bit about it um, so far, is uh, crack initiation, whether it's due to corrosion, is primarily, primarily due to a decrease in thickness of the structural steel, resulting in increase in stress levels at critical sections. The importance of ship's protective coatings is incredibly important, as corrosion can only take place once this protective coating is damaged. Ship structures are subject to cyclic stresses due to wave pressure, ship motions, and loading conditions during their operation. And hence fatigue is an important design criteria while designing and building ships. The science of cracks is really important to forensic investigators or insurance surveyors, class surveyors, port state control, other maritime agencies to ascertain seaworthiness of a vessel. In general, the maintenance uh, maintained by the ship owner operator to assist in accident investigations and port state detentions, etc. So this uh, bulk carrier cape size um, using SPS on the tank tops over seven holes. Um, this goes back to my, my comments about the benefits of using SPS. The repair schedule was reduced by up to 80%. As you can see in the technical details, it was over 5,000 square meters completed in 25 days using a 10 millimeter top plate and a 20 millimeter PU core, and E is for the existing plate. So the improved economics for repair and through life operation of a bulk carrier 
the tank top remains flat, so it's got superior impact resistance. It's not just sheet steel where the point loading or the, the energy absorbed uh, locally. Um, when, uh, when a grab or it is impacted on an SPS deck, it absorbs that energy and distributes it um, around the panel and surrounding panels. So it acts in a global manner. SPS tank tops remain flat, eliminates pooling, reducing wear and corrosion, extends service life and reduce maintenance costs. So if there's no dishing, it improves the uh, economics, the operational economics. So prevents cargo retention, holds can be cleaned quickly to take different cargoes, reduces the vessel turnaround by up to 12 hours per discharge operation. SPS extends the lifetime of the ballast tank structure. So if you think about underneath that tank top, the coatings will stay intact and last longer, reduces corrosion and also maintenance costs. Roro row case study, deck strengthening again, uh, 1600 square meters of a car deck to take double stacked container trailers. So this is a repair of the existing deck, but also to upgrade um, the deck loading capacity. Uh, by using SBS complete in 12 days, including the fitting of 600 lastering pots. So, um, so you can see there the technical details, it's 620E. So we designed it for a six mil top plate, 20 mil core and the existing. And you can see some of the, the logos of our repeat clients. We've you know done, uh, I think nearly a hundred row row projects uh, in the last 20 years. And I think 32 for P&O and yeah, for anything from 40 square meters to 5,000 square meters in that section. Sound deading and, and vibration elimination. So this is a new build passenger Roro ferry sailing the Mediterranean. Uh, the problem was the propeller cavitating and creating excess noise and vibration that transmitted through the ship. And uh, as an anecdote, kept the captain awake and wasn't too happy about it. So um, this was brand new out of, uh, out of the shipyard. Um, so what was required here was um, on decks uh, three and six for the SPS to be installed in between the, the deck stiffeners to eliminate the uh, sound and vibration problems. The vessel sailing was ineffective. And this is what's key for SPS because we operate with such a small team on board. Uh, riding squads can board anywhere in the world and they can accompany the vessel and carry out the works while the vessel is at sea. Um, and its day-to-day -day schedule uh, is not affected um, if the guys are, are are working while it's in transit. Generator flat case study, I put this slide in to show that SPS, if you can imagine the room you're sitting in right now, I've mostly spoken about uh, your, your the floor, the deck uh, on a horizontal um, side, but uh, SPS can actually be installed on the vertical, which we'll see some slides uh, soon on that. And uh, SPS can be um, installed uh, on, the, on the deck head above. So for this instance, there's a, there's a generator on board the ship, but the deck, the deck that the generator sat on uh, was corroded. Um, so we left it in situ and we went into the tank below and uh, installed SPS from underneath. So there was no need to cut a hole in the side of the ship, remove the generator, etc. cetera. So, um, cruise ship case study, um, something close to our hearts down in the south. Uh, as we know, you know, uh, in March 2020, the cruise industry kind of shut down completely after an outbreak on a cruise ship in, in China. Um, cruise lines revenues crashed. And they issued refunds for all the cruises that were booked during 2020. And as there's uh, approximately 30 million people cruising each year previously, uh, that's uh, an eye-watering number, to be fair. Um, a few of the biggest cruise lines are, are hemorrhaging hundreds of millions of dollars and the trend was to sell off or scrap some of the older tonnage with, I think it was 33 cruise ships sold last year. Um, the way people cruise going forward, it'll change. The way cruise lines think about repairing their fleet will also change towards innovative technology solutions like SBS. Um, more time at sea, less time in ports, um, riding squads. And, and this... Uh, this slide here that shows the, the Queen Mary tank top and deck reinstatement uh, for Carnival. Um, we had our crew board in Southampton and sail with the ship to New York uh, and back and complete um, tank top reinstatements while the vessel was at sea and deck reinstatements. Um, as you can see from the photographs there, head height uh, in between the fuel oil tank and the fresh water tank um, was quite tight but a very successful project all around. If you imagine if that ship had to go into to dry dock to get these uh, repairs completed, um, not only the, the revenue lost while it was not sailing, um, but also the cost of um, that tricky repair. 
large commercial fish, fishing vessel owned by a major uh, uh, US um, in, in Seattle. Um, Troll deck corrosion caused by salt water breaking down coatings and constant dragging of nets on the deck caused erosion. Uh, client needed a fast structural reinstatement and strengthening solution to increase the corrosion margin of the troll deck and future proof the vessel with a thicker top plate. SPS was selected for a fast, non intrusive, and permanent class approved solution. Um, we conducted all the design work in house and uh, supported by uh, classification societies, and it was completed. Um, Sorry, the, the, the project was completed uh, by a local shipyard in, in the United States. Ice class strengthening, as I mentioned earlier on, um, upgrades uh, the vessel. So we, can, we can perform upgrades to vessels uh, to upgrade their ice class donation. Um, minimum framing modifications, improve resistance against ice and impact loads. Um, saves cost and complexity over crop and renew, improve lifetime performance, resistance to abrasions and indentations from impact from the ice, and future maintenance repair and downtime is reduced and it's a short project schedule. So with this uh, on the bow section, the SPS is a little bit thicker than it is down in midships, um, but it does save you having to do extensive plating on the outside and also structural um, framing modifications on the inside. Um, the bottom photograph there uh, where the SPS has been applied to the hull, that's not actually same principle for ice class, but it was um, for a, a dredger um, to protect a, a dredging vessel hull. Um, as I mentioned, SPS can be applied from below. Um, the vessel was experiencing potentially uh, damaging, uh, damage by boulders on the seabed. Um, the work was undertaken in the Mediterranean and the hull was reinforced um, in just 14 days. So short schedules, great benefit. LNG carriers covering quite a few uh, different ships across uh, <laughs> across the world here. Uh, this was a, a project to um, protect against groove corrosion of longitudinals um, where the stagnant water would, would collect. We didn't want to um, uh, use traditional methods because it would have damaged the cryogenic membrane containment system on the other side. So SPS was chosen in this position because all the hot work, um, if you can see here, this is where the hot work would have taken place uh, and up here, which is away from the existing plating. Dredger case study, side shell strengthening. This was um, in the United Arab Emirates. Um, the dredger wanted, the dredger initially was dredging and sailing to um, uh, the, the rainbow zone and it was then depositing and then sailing back but it was using up a lot of time so they bought I think it was 18 barges that came alongside but the vessel wasn't designed to have barges come alongside and they had extensive impact damage on the hull um, and this is why SPS was installed to protect about protect the, the ship from the barges coming alongside so that's side shell strengthening and then on a larger scale we look at uh, FPSO compact double hull system, which um, for an FPSO uh, offshore, again, to have uh, protection in the way of the boat landing area. Conventional solutions would be cofferdams or sponsons, uh, but SPS eliminates the need to install cofferdams uh, or double hulls. So it's approved by all major classification society and it's got proven reliability. This is an example of one of those, as you can see, to the extent is three over 3,000 square meters and uh, the design is a 15 millimeter top plate and a 30 millimeter core. Helidex, I put this uh, slide in just to show you that um, different uh, materials can be used. Uh, weight was an issue for the helideck here, so we use an aluminium top plate. This was to upgrade the helideck um, to carry heavier Russian helicopters. Below the waterline repairs, heavy grooving again, like I spoke about earlier, where the hot work takes place away from the side shell itself. So you're welding to the frames rather than welding to the hull plating itself. FPSO escape tunnel, this goes back to blast and fire protection. It's 152 meters long uh, for an FPSO that is now operating in the North Sea. Um, it's the most advanced escape tunnel in the world. <laughs> Uh, fire protection is uh, exceeded H60 and J30 requirements. As I mentioned, it's 2.3 bar blast pressure, uh, performance verified by full-scale testing. Uh, it's got uh, 
it's using stainless steel and carbon steel, stainless steel on the outside, carbon steel on the inside. So it's a unique double protection system. The outer skin primarily protects from blast and fire and uh, the inner skin maintains the tunnel integrity uh, for, for safe escape. And because there's no secondary stiffeners or internal fire blanket insulation required, um, it's just like walking down a corridor. So there's no trip hazards, et cetera, in an emergency. It's got radial corners to defect, deflect the blast and, and green water loads. Main deck repair case study. This was for uh, a client of ours. Uh, again, this is to show a riding squad, how the guys boarded. Um, the initial inquiry came uh, when the vessel was down in West Africa. So a team went to do an inspection and then joined the vessel in Spain, um, carried out all the steel work while it transited from Spain across the Mediterranean to Cyprus. And once it uh, got to Cyprus, then the SBS panels were injected. Uh, just in one day. So it's a perfect example of um, how SBS can uh, carry out work and not deviate the, the ship's program. Dropped object protection and crash deck. Uh, so the permanent uh, protection, this on the left hand side, that photograph, you can see the SBS panels being put in place on top of a pontoon of a um, semi submersible. This was after a two ton drill collar fell 37 meters. Uh, in a storm and punctured the pontoon. So the client asked us, could we design something that would absorb that energy? Um, so we uh, put SPS, I think it was a 50 millimeter core on that. There was no disruption to the activities in the, in the thruster room below. Um, and the whole project was completed in three weeks. Uh, the modular crash deck on the right hand side that you can see in yellow, uh, this is an SPS uh, plate with custom supporting frames. It's installed over existing or a new substructure, uh, welded or bolted connections, systems designed to absorb energy from dropped objects through plastic deformation uh, of the plate and the frame, uh, reduce force transfer to substructure, absorbs energy through plastic deformation of the plate and frame, and it supports operational loads usable as a, as a working platform, so as a full stack. We've done quite a few of those um, for offshore assets. Spud can strengthening, uh, this uh, was for a jack up vessel in the North Sea. The area is prone to seabed boulders, danger to the spud can bottom plating and internal structure. So before SPS, it had a rating, I think of 900 kilonewtons, which was unsatisfactory to class. And after applying SPS from below, um, we upgraded it to 2,800 kilonewtons as a tight docking schedule, um, which meant it was um, not appropriate for, for crop and replace. We also look at tubular structures with the TSG pipe repair with SPS. It's a polyurethane core, creates a structural SPS by bonding the outer shell to the original pipe. So this is uh, to be used while the pipe is in service. So uh, you don't need to shut down the medium inside. Um, it's designed for the repair of pipe schedules ranging from six inch to 22 inch. Um, Larger requirements can be considered on a case by case basis. Minimum temperature is minus 20 and a maximum temperature of 80 degrees. And I think this is the only permanent non hot work pipe repair solution on the market. So as you can see, the clamshells, as we call them, are bolted around the pipe and then the SPS is injected in between the old pipe and the new clamshells. No heat input solutions, just a final word on this. As you can see on the left hand side, it's a floating roof of a above ground storage tank that had holes in it. SPS um, adhered the bars and the plate and uh, sealed the, the roof itself that was leaking through holes. And then on the right hand side, we've got a um, gas type floor uh, with leaking hydrocarbons through. And um, so it was in a um, HAZX environment and we installed SPS, uh, no hot work solution using structured adhesives and uh, polyurethane. It was a tricky project because no two plates were the same um, size or design. Uh, so it was pretty unique. And that was carried out offshore in situ uh, with the onboard crew trained up prior to going out. So we used, um, for want of a better word, local content. And aware of the time, thank you very much for your attention. That's the end of my presentation on SBS. Um, as I mentioned at the start, for a copy of the presentation along with some of my notes, um, just drop me an email um, and with any questions that don't get answered in the allotted time. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ian, for a, a very informative uh, presentation on, uh, on the benefits of F SBS. We have a couple of questions 
uh, one, so, well, someone's raised their hand, and then the another person's asked one in the chat. So I, well, I'll start with the one that's been asked in the chat, because that's the one I can access first. Uh, so David has asked, what is the largest single pore area that can be used? Um, it, it, on a horizontal deck, um, we're limited, I suppose, to the um, size of steel plate that you can get in. Uh, essentially, we would use a standard large plate of 20 square meters, two meters by 10 meters, um, and we can inject that quite, quite easily. Um, we have three different types of injection equipment. So the largest piece of injection equipment is shipped in a 20 foot shipping container and it's on uh, Caterpillar tracks. So it can be driven around the deck to different locations or up ramps to different decks um, on roller ferries, etc. cetera. Um, and that uh, carries um, two tons of polyurethane internally uh, for it to be injected. Then we've got a medium sized machine that can be pushed around on wheels. And then we've got the smallest injection machine in the world, which is, um, an engineering marvel in itself uh, can be broken down and passed through manhole covers on board so you can carry out works and tanks. It's a bit like Lego plug and play. You take it apart and pass it through the hatch and get down there and put it all back together again. Um, so we have uh, bespoke injection equipment to cater for all panel sizes, needs or, um, and uh, orientation of the panel, whether it's on the horizontal, vertical or, or overhead. Great, thank you. Uh, so, um, Jayan has put his hand up, so I'll just um, allow Jayan to talk. Um, I'll just ask him to unmute himself. I assume you're meaning me. Uh, yes, that's right, Jayan. Thanks. Thanks again, Ian. Uh, it's different from the, the one you did up north. I'm glad I tuned in. <laughs> I'm very impressed, very impressed. Thank you, sir. Did you no question, just a comment. Okay, thank uh, you, Joan. Uh, much appreciated, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. I didn't want to copy a similar presentation I had given previously, so I, I tried to make it more relevant to uh, our geographical location uh, where we, we look at uh, the Roro Ferry Market Cross Channel and we look at uh, cruise ships coming out of Southampton and uh, uh, other unique vessels that uh, you know we can we can be more uh, aware of, I suppose, on the on the south coast. Thanks, Ian. Um, Thanks. So the next uh, person who, who who would like to to ask a question is, is Jenny. So I'll just allow her to talk. You go ahead, Jenny. Oh, she's still on mute. That perennial. Well, well, in the meantime, uh, Andrew has asked a question, which is, what are the condition limits for installation, the, the minimum stroke, maximum temperature and humidity? Sorry, you broke up there. Is it the minimum? And, and, the, and the minimum stroke, maximum temperature and the humidity. Um, so what uh -huh. are the condition limits? Okay, so um, that, that, that is a, uh, a geographical question, I, I would imagine as well. Um, so if... Uh, if I could say that SPS has been installed uh, on nearly every continent um, the, for, for different weather uh, variants. Um, we have operated in sub-zero temperatures where we manipulate the temperature on the deck uh, and we would heat the polyurethane to a greater temperature to accommodate for that. Um, so I've, I've installed SPS at minus 20 and uh, Again, I've, I've installed SPS at uh, plus 45, where we've had to delay injections maybe till a bit cooler in the evening in the Middle East. Um, the humidity side of things, we create a cavity uh, by an airtight cavity. Once we put the top plate on and weld it to the perimeter bars, we then blow dry air through the cavity to remove any moisture or humidity that may remain inside the cavity before injection. So our, our QA process is actually uh, really in depth. Uh, in, in the sense that, uh, you know, we, we test that we're getting our minimum 60 microns uh, on the surface preparation, um, that the humidity level is less than one gram per kilogram um, in the cavity itself. Um, and uh, we also carry out a leak test to make sure that the, the welding in a welded uh, solution uh, is, 
is is good uh, and there's no leaks because our polyurethane is pumped in in a, in a liquid format and then it solidifies so if we didn't carry out a, a leak test and test all the wells to, to hold a small pressure um, then the polyurethane is liquid format could leak out through a compromised well shall we say um, so there are stringent uh, QA procedures that, uh, that that we go through to ensure that the cavity is um, in, in, in the best environment that we can. And so that's what's happening inside the cavity. So we control that. Outside the cavity, we have we have measures such as looking after the polyurethane cure temperature. We put thermal blankets over the cavity itself. We have in supreme cold and temperatures, we can uh, put heated jackets around the chemical before it's loaded into the machine, making sure it's up to a higher temperature, et cetera. So as I say, over the last 20 years, we've experienced uh, projects all over the world, different humidities, uh, temperatures. I hope that would answer the question. Okay, so the next question is from George, who would like to know whether repair is possible on the sandwich plates. Yes, very much so. Um, the, for instance, if you had, uh, best way to describe it, if you had a um, hatch cover made out of SPS, so it's a triple barrier, uh, it's traditional hatch cover, single skin, and you're loading in a container and the container comes loose from the crane and it lands on the hatch cover on its point and it penetrates the hatch cover uh, because it's just sheet steel. This is its watertight integrity to sail, but if it was an SPS hatch cover, then uh, the SPS would absorb the energy of that uh, container. Now it was still indent. And how you repair that is to cut around the section that is... Um, damaged, uh, remove the polyurethane from inside in its solid format. So you'd, uh, you'd take that out and then you would grind back underneath the plate, maybe 20, 30 millimeters, install backing strips around the plate you've just cut out, put a new plate on top, and then that's forming its own mini cavity itself. And then you re-inject it with uh, the polyurethane in its liquid format. And the great thing about SPS is that SPS in its liquid format solidifies to SPS in its solid format seamlessly. So there's no there's no loss. Um, you can you can you can repour it essentially, and and uh, it's such a simple process. If it is a very small area that 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 has had damage, that you can instruct the crew on board the vessel and send them the materials, and they can mix it themselves and and, and pour it if it's you know a one square meter job. Okay, and um, we have uh, well at the moment we have one last question, which is uh, from Andrew again who would like to know um, whether life expectancy has been assessed or predicted? Yes, so um, if you look at a, a vessel, um, its life cycle, first five to 10 years, sorry, um, first zero to five years, five to 10, 10 to 20, um, a, a lot of the, 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 the repair work or the reinstatement work we get is on midlife vessels looking to extend uh, their through life maintenance um, also looking at asset integrity um, we say essentially to meet the design criteria once we put SPS on board the, the vessel it will last the lifetime of the vessel so it's at, it's at whatever time you come to us it should last the lifetime of the vessel um, for some of our um, clients that we've worked with over the last 20 years when the vessel comes to the end of its life the SPS deck is still as flat as the day they put it in Thank you. Um, well, that seems to be it for the questions. So, um, and on behalf of everybody, uh, thank you again for a very interesting lecture. Uh, the lecture has been recorded and uh, once it's been appropriately edited, will be uploaded to, to YouTube in the next few days. Our next lecture is on the 11th of February. It follows the AGM and it will be on early design decisions on warships and their unexpected consequences, which sounds interesting. Uh, because it follows the AGM, it will be a bit later than usual. So the AGM will be at 6.30 and the lecture will start at quarter past seven. So if you don't want to attend the AGM, I promise not to start the lecture early. Um, so <laughs> you can just, just join it at uh, quarter past seven. Uh, so we'll be sending an invite out uh, uh, by email to, to you all in, in the next few days, um, along with the, the link to, to this um, uh, presentation. Uh, we are still looking for uh, nominees uh, who, who would like to put forward for elections to the council at the AGM. Uh, if, you, if you're interested or if you think that's something you'd like to do, uh, please contact me at onsec at southernjointbranch.co.uk and send me an email. Um, the deadline for getting nominated is the 28th of January. I will accept 
your just the names of your nominee and your the seconder in the email, perhaps with them copied in, just so you know it's it's all legit. Um, that probably the easiest way rather than bothering with kind of nomination forms being signed, especially at the, at the moment where we can't really meet each other anyway. Um, and as I said, the deadline for that's 28th. Uh, I can't accept any nominations after that date because um, our constitution doesn't allow it. Um, and um, other than that, uh, thank you for your attention and good night. And I will hopefully um, talk to you all again next month. Thank you very much.